I'm going to be demoing the FME Socrata Writer. Uh, this demo is going to show, uh, as an example, uh, reading data uh, from an Excel file um, with some rows of data, uh, and then doing a little bit of transformation on that data, and then publishing the result to the Socrata platform using the FME Socrata Writer. Uh, so this is just a demonstration to kind of demo how the writer works. Um, but of course, the FME is a very powerful tool, and you can you can do all kinds of uh, ETL with it. So this is just kind of an introduction to the Socrata Writer. So the Excel file I'm going to be publishing, as an example, is this this Excel file here, and there are 21 rows of data. So now I have uh, FME. A workbench, FME desktop, uh, open. I'm going to start off with a blank workspace. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a reader. So I click the Add Reader button. And now, as for format, I'm going to select the format. So as you can see, there's tons of different uh, data formats and databases that you can read from in FME. Um, but I want to, so I'm just going to go ahead and search for Excel, because that's file. Uh, the format I'm going to be reading in. So I, I, here's Excel, so I'll click on that. And now the data set, um, I'm just going to select the Excel file, and that's going to be on my desktop, this food inspections small. Now I'll select that file. Uh, if I wanted to kind of see a preview of it, I can click parameters and see that it looks like it's going to be read in fine. Press OK. And uh, notice that the uh, header row, first row of the data, those are going to correspond to the attribute names or the column names in Socrata. So now I'm going to go press OK. It's going to add the reader to uh, the workspace here. And if I drop down uh, the list of attributes that are read in, you can see the, those are equivalent to the column names. So those are now the attributes read into FME. So the next step is that now I want to just do a little simple bit, a bit of transformation on this data. So the, what I want to do here is in this, um, for this risk column, um, I want to do some value mapping where anytime there's a one, I want to create a new column and have one map to a uh, high risk or a, a low risk um, name. So it'll, it'll be a risk category will be low risk for ones. And then anytime a two is seen, it's going to map that to, I want to map that to medium and three to high. Um, and, and this is food inspection data, so uh, that, that's, that's the context here. So the risk number, I just want to do map that to a new column with the sort of uh, human readable category name. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to do use an attribute value mapper. And over here in the transformer gallery, I can just kind of search for uh, the transformer. So a lot of times, too, you can kind of have something in mind that you want to do, um, just kind of start typing, like start typing mapper or map, and it'll come up with some some uh, transformers. So here it is, the attribute value mapper. And when I click on it, I can get um, a little uh, documentation on what that transformer does. So um, that's all here. Um, so I, I, I want to use the attribute value mapper, so I'm going to double click on it, and it's going to add it to the workspace. And now if I open up the parameters of this mapper by double clicking on it. Um, now I'm going to choose the source attribute that I want to map. So that's risk. And now the destination attribute um, is the new column I want to create. Um, you can also map this to the same column to overwrite a column. Um, but I want to create a new column that it's called risk category. So now I'm going to uh, write up my mapping. So the source value is one. I want to map that to low, two, I'll map that to medium, and three, map that to high. So now I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And in the output, uh, you can see now that it's added this risk category attribute. OK, so now the next thing I want to do is uh, add the writer. Uh, the last step is now publish this result to Socrata. So now I'm going to click the Add Writer. And again, I can write to various formats in FME. Um, there's lots of formats. Um, in this case, I just search for Socrata. So type, start typing in Socrata, and it comes right up. Double click on that. Um, and now I need to set the parameters. 
So if I click on subscribe to parameters, now I need to establish the domain, username, and password. So I'm going to be publishing to this uh, socrati.demo.socrati.com domain. Um, I'll copy that domain, paste it in here, and now I'm going to type in my credentials. And hit OK. Um, and now, uh, now I'm going to keep this uh, as the default here, and this is basically going to add the attributes that I want to write to Socrata. So I'm going to copy all the attributes from the reader and write all of those to the data set. So if I hit OK, it's going to add the writer. And as you can see, it has a list of the attributes being written. Um, and now if I connect uh, the arrow, now as you can see, all those uh, attributes are all valid and they're going to be written to Scrata. And then this risk category, though, isn't being written, so I need to add that to the writer. So to open up the Socrata writer and edit its parameters, just double click on it. And now um, under attribute definition, I can actually add the risk category um, attribute. And I can say where that's going to fall um, in the column order. And I want to put that right after risk, so I'll move that up and hit OK. Now as you can see, it added that risk category attribute to be written. So now I'm going to open back up this um, Socrata Writer parameters. And now um, I can set the name of the data set to create on the Socrata platform. So this is actually going to automatically create a data set with the appropriate um, columns and data types according to the attributes that I'm writing. And I'm going to give it a name. So I can call this kind of whatever I want, food inspections demo. And it's going to create this uh, data set on the Socrata platform on the socrata.u.demo.socrata.com domain. Um, now if I go over to format parameters, now I can set a few other things, such as uh, do I want to publish this data set, um, uh, or do I want to keep it as a working copy. Um, I can just keep it as a working copy and publish it and ma after making sure it looks okay. Um, I will keep it private, but you could have it pu created uh, public. Um, and the rest of this um, I'll, I'll get into a little later, but um, it's basically going to create the data set and then upsert all the attributes to that data set, add them, add the rows. Uh, and this geometry column name here, um, if, I was, if I had geospatial data, I could actually write that uh, geospatial point data um, to a Socrata location column, and that would happen um, if I had some, some, if I had read in geospatial data into FME, I could, I could write that out into a column, which you can establish here. Um, but I'm not going to get into that. All right, so now I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm actually going to run the transformation. So I hit Run. And over here, down, down below, there's a log um, showing everything that's happening. So there's lots of data uh, being output in this log. And uh, as, as it uploads, uh, you can see uh, the progress. And once once it finishes here, um, it, it's yeah, there it goes. It finished. Um, so once it finishes, um, I want to go to the data set that it recently created. So um, one way to do that is to look into the log um, in FME and find the the line that says successfully imported a new Socrata data set. The data set ID is this, and this is the data set identifier of the newly created data set. So I can copy that out of the log. and paste it into the web browser. Um, and a quick way to get to a data set is you can do slash D and slash uh, data set identifier and it'll go to the data set. Um, another way I could have done that is, is looking in my um, profile and seeing um, a newly created data set. And there it is there. Um, but here I'm at the, the data set. And now I'm just going to look it over and make sure everything looks good. And oh, it looks like it created this geometry column. Um, and since I don't have any any geometry or any location uh, point data, I'm just going to delete that column. But everything else looks good. All the rows came in. Um, as you can see, the data types, um, it's a good idea to validate those. Um, and as you can see, this mapping happened correctly. The twos were mapped to medium, ones to low. And there's actually a date values in here, and that also got uh, imported with the correct 
data type of date and time data type. So everything looks good. So I'm going to publish the data set. Um, so now I have my, my data set. Um, and now I'm just going to show kind of running the workflow again to update the data set. Because if you were to automate things, you would want to configure the workflow to update an existing data set and have that maybe happen on a scheduled basis. So to update a data set now in FME, I just need to um, input the data set identifier into the writer. So whenever, um, if you're ever going to get the, if you ever want to get the data set identifier from a particular data set, you can just always navigate to that data set, look at the end of the URL, and copy that uh, eight character identifier off the end of the URL. So going back to my workflow, I'm going to open up the writer properties again. And uh, this time in, in data set name, I'm going to replace the name with the, the data set identifier. Now this is going to trigger it to update that existing data set with that data set identifier. Um, so now also if I want to go over to format parameters, um, now I can uh, explain a little bit about some of these other uh, properties. So when you're updating existing data sets, the publish data set and public um, fields, those are not really relevant. It's not going to change the stat, the status of the data. Uh, the, uh, um, it's not going to change if the data set is public or private or not with this. Um, but this is uh, useful here is I can actually change the writer mode. So if I wanted to do deletes, I could actually do those, which would be based on a row identifier, um, which I don't have set on this data set. So the, the, um, but another thing I can do is I can uh, do a replace operation. And the way to do that is to set truncate data set to yes. But I want to leave truncate data set to no and just do a normal upsert, which will translate to an append because I do not have a row identifier set up. So, so I'll keep those the same and hit OK. And now I'll run this transformation again. And what this is going to do now is append another 21 records to that data set. So now I should. Once this is finished, I should see uh, the 21 uh, records appended to the data set. So now it's finished. And if I go back to my data set and refresh the data set, now I should see twice as many records. So yeah, now there are 42 records. So just kind of appended those, data, those records again. Um, finally, uh, I just want to show um, doing a replace. So going back to FME, open up the, the writer. And then if I want to do a replace to bring it back to those 21 records, um, reflecting the, that Excel file, I can just set truncate data set first to yes, hit OK, and run the workflow again. And this is actually going to be doing a a kind of smart replace, and it, this uh, replace operation in the FME Socrat Writer will actually automatically figure out only the records that changed since the previous update. So it ends up making um, making things very efficient. So if you have a really large number of records um, or features in FME that you're writing, uh, this will make uh, they'll optimize that so that the the writing is is done as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So now go back to the data set and refresh it to make sure. It worked. And yeah, as you can see, I'm back to 21, 21 rows of data. Yeah, so that, that concludes the demo of the FME Sagrada Writer. Thanks, everyone.